I got this huge heavy Faima coffee bean grinder for free. Not without a reason, it's not working. But technically it looks sound. These burrs are sharp. They are renewed recently and that's of course promising. It's dirty. <laughs> There is a lot of remaining ground material over there, which is somewhat strange. And over there you can barely see it, but that's the micro switch. There is a switch here too. After having removed this cap. These screws should be renewed. screwdrivers but uh, now it's become a little bit difficult so I took uh, tire levers which I uh, bought 40 years ago to pass the Sahara with the Chevaux car and I had to repair my tires on the way Okay, well, again it's dirty. Now I can show you how I removed the rotor. This was still on it, or I put it on. To be able to tap with a hammer. I put 
this bar here I put that bar over here that gave me a few millimeters play to pull the anchor up like that I uh, put some tension on it from this side and then tapped with a hammer hammer this hammer then I needed to tap a few taps with them with the steel hammer and then it came loose so then I had the anchor this bearing is a little bit dirty before remounting the rotor which is uh, this part uh, and this lower bearing is sounding good and feeling good no play either uh, I uh, will uh, clean this bearing in acetone I have to remove this okay I took a needle and then you can simply flip this out okay acetone is the solution my ultrasonic cleaner for the workshop like new again the, the damper could be screwed off easily just like that I discovered that I could easily remove this, just push it out, slip it out. Good. Well, clean a few screws and then I will assemble the dozer and uh, the hopper because otherwise uh, I get too many different parts and uh, the risk is there that I don't uh, remember how everything must be assembled. <laughs> well, I found this Max Repair Power. It's uh, transparent, it glues all materials and it stays Elastic and that is a combination that I like I polished the hopper The hopper is ready I have uh, decided to repair this scratch with the UV light hardening glue okay that's it let me take off the excess glue and then this uh, UV light to harden it I will lay it down somewhere it will take half an hour or so I guess uh, this is a little bit delicate because uh, there is the starter the starter of the of the motor <laughs> which might get a little bit a few drops with of water but uh, try to avoid that as much as possible and also I'm able to use my compressor and uh, blow away any moisture right at the spot Well, 
after all glues are dry or hardened so I can start mounting all parts of the dozer. This is polished too, looks like new again. Look at these parts now, ready for mounting. I took this out of the freezer, it's too cold to handle, not too hot to handle, but too cold to handle. There are these two springs that uh, will drop out, so I will first lay them in the space that is meant to be there. Okay, so now I can lower it down. Here's the bearing. It's icy cold. Okay, good. Now I will. Yep. I want to loosen this once more. I've made a piece, small piece of leather with which I'm going to hold this. Yes, and now I can untwist this. With uh, the old bearing, this one, uh, it's slides in and out easily. Also with the new one. Now my bearing is at 80 degrees. I'll take it. The bearing is in place, it runs smoothly. Need three screws. Okay. Like that. Locking nut. Says uh, 2009. This is a, a timer, and I discovered that you can take it off like that. Those plugs all look clean, so I don't change a thing. Plug it in. <laughs> Galvanized screws. Then I have this on with this. So that's fixed. And this is the last cool thing. I've uh, made a piece, a small piece of leather with which I'm going to hold this. Yes, and now I can untwist this. Now 
now I have to find a replacement for these screws. I found a good replacement for uh, these screws and that are those high tensile strength screws that I have already 45 years. Very high quality, army quality. And um, but the diameter is of the head is too large, so I will have to adjust that. And they are also too long, so also that needs some adjustment. Well, um, to prevent coffee grounds to collect over here, I uh, have introduced an O-ring. I checked already that uh, the o-ring is completely com can completely be compressed by turning these screws. Also, they will prevent that the screws come loose. Habit. Okay. have uh, put some tape around this switch and uh, this switch is uh, a switch that switches off so now it's on so that's why the only way to operate the machine now is with the main switch like that I uh, removed this from the dozer and uh, fix it with the two screws. I fixed the left cable. Grinder, especially when we mount this again.
that's the position. Here is the arrow and that's number one. So some glue. The grinds will be blown out over here. So what I need, what I want to do to make this uh, a single shot grinder uh, with a better, uh, with lower re retention rate, is uh, to make a spout over here. After a lot of forging. I still have the problem that this is too high and this is too narrow so I make a new cut I made one straight cut over a few centimeters over here the same on the other side and here the angle cut and that I'm going to do also on the other side I was ready for my first single shot grinding, but I forgot these parts. The grinder is uh, lying, lying now, and um, the spout is mounted um, in this way. I bent stainless steel wires, thick wires, and uh, these are glued with two component glue to the stainless steel tube. I already drank coffee, ground with the grinder and it's perfect. And there is easy access with the brush too. I put uh, 10 grams of uh, coffee inside the grinder to see how the ground coffee behaves. Let's see what happens. For cooking purposes you have these rings, they are of very thin stainless steel. What I did was uh, flatten one and uh, cut out with the Dremel tool a rectangle of 275 to 37.5 millimeters, which is exactly the diameter of this rectangle. And that became this shape. The widest shape is uh, where uh, the coffee is uh, thrown to, so it will be mounted like this. It will be slipped on like that, and uh, uh, I glued a brass flat uh, piece of metal on top and now I'm going to make a spout of uh, pure copper. I have this uh, piece. I first want to polish it because I, I'm going to bend it to a, to a spout uh, uh, a shape and um, uh, well then, then it's hard to polish so I want to polish it now.
I'll show you a trick to remove the grease or the wax or whatever it, it may be. I use kitchen cleaner. Instead of uh, using this uh, quite uh, vulnerable piece, uh, I made a kind of dummy from wood and uh, I uh, will try to uh, wrap and hammer the soft copper metal around this uh, piece. Now this is the result. If possible. I don't know if this will work. Okay. That's what I wanted. So far so good. I made it in this shape but it should have had this shape. <laughs> so I'll undo this and uh, try to reforge it. So far so good. I drilled two holes over there and uh, we'll connect the two pieces. I discovered that uh, this machine was uh, never unpacked fully because there is a protection film on the counter, on the dial and uh, by using a, a hair dryer uh, I can make this warm and uh, remove it. And now the dial looks like new.
I made the spout of copper and stainless steel, but you may also consider using transparent plastic or a cheap tin can that will work as well.